What's going on everybody? Justin here with Everything Aquarium. Back with another video of course. Today, I want to start off by wishing you guys a happy Merry Christmas, of course. And I uh, hope you guys had a Thanksgiving that was uh, great as well. I was thankful for a lot of things, including all my fish friends here and uh, all you guys on the channel. So, uh, just wanted to start off by saying that, of course. Um, anyways, today's video is going to be cool. Um, I told you guys a while ago about this 40 gallon here, and you may have seen a picture of it on Instagram. Behind me, it's completely set up. I've been kind of letting it establish for about a week or two now. Um, this takes pretty much untouched. I just added those rocks a couple days ago that you see in there now. Um, but, but besides that, I like to just kind of let my tank settle in. Um, what I mean by that really is just letting everything cycle, letting that sand get some bacteria on it, letting the rock, letting the wood, all that stuff uh, get some bacteria on it. Of course, you know, adding your filtration and all that stuff comes in the beginning, but um, all that stuff was already established, all that filtration and whatnot. So I just wanted to let everything settle in for a good couple of weeks just to make sure these fish aren't shy and everything. That way I can give you guys a good video. So anyways, let's check these guys out right behind me. Um, matter of fact, I'll tell you a little bit about them right now. They are topaz cichlids, excuse me. Topaz cichlids, I'm not gonna try to say the scientific name because I'll butcher it. They're Central American fish. Um, they're a really cool fish. They're, they're, they're almost identical to a convict cichlid in the fact that uh, they have the same body shape. They have almost the same vertical lines that a convict will get sometimes along with that black dot. Uh, they definitely have the same attitude, that's for sure. They will change to a nice yellow color the more mature they grow. And uh, they have blue eyes as well, which is a very cool uh, very cool aspect of that fish. You don't see too many of those um, features in a fish. But uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through the whole thing here and walk you through the setup and what, everything I did uh, from start to finish. So I'm gonna quit talking and uh, take you over to the tank and we'll, we'll get started there. So before I do jump right into the fish, I'll tell you about the setup real quick. It's a 40 gallon breeder on a custom made 2x4 stand that I built myself with a Fluval Canister 206 filter with uh, cycled media, uh, a whole bunch of um, ceramic bio rings in there, um, and a couple sponges of course for mechanical filtration. Um, a Marine Land 100 watt heater which is actually getting upgraded to a 150 tomorrow in Ehaim Yager or Jaeger. Um, just to be on the safe side because it is winter here so I don't want to mess around. It's got a nice size sponge filter in there and everything uh, in those filtration systems was cycled. Plus I added some um, Seachem stability which helps cycle the tank as well. Um, like I said I kind of have let this tank set. I haven't done much to it. I've just added you know a little bit of a little bit of uh, nutrients for the plants and whatnot and some carbon and not much. And actually matter of fact before we go any farther I want to show you there is the rubber lip pleco right there that you probably won't see for the rest of the video. So I want to point him out to you now. He's really tiny, about an inch, inch and a half. Just picked him up a couple days ago to clean up basically because there's a little bit of algae growth on, on the uh, on the glass. But anyways, other than that, um, Pogostem and Salatus Octopus on both sides. Red Tiger Lily Ball over there. This is just some coarse black sand. Um, Sirius Stone, like I said. Uh, just put that in there a couple days ago as well. And some type of bog wood or bog root or something of that sort. Uh, just got a cheap Amazon LED light on top. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the setup. I do have a little tiny circulation pump over by the filter there. Uh, the filter intake and the heater over there just to kind of disperse some of that uh, heated water out of that area into the tank itself. And uh, that's pretty much it for the setup. So let's get into the fish because I know you guys are all dying to hear about them. Um, sorry for preaching so much about the setup, but I just like to go over everything. So once again, we have topaz cichlids. I actually ordered these from Aquatic Arts uh, about two weeks ago. They came in looking good. They they uh, they uh, warmed right up to me after a couple days, and uh, they're you know still a little bit skittish because they are cichlids and uh, they like to run and hide every now and then. But uh, they're pretty used to me now. They're used to me feeding. I'm really loud and clanky when I feed, so in my opinion, that's good because then they get used to that and they don't run and hide as soon as they hear a noise. Um, but yeah, uh, scientific name, I'm going to try to pronounce it, uh, Crypto Heroes My Myrony, Myrony, um, or also known as Amatilania Myrony. Not exactly sure if that was correct or not. Um, anyways, it's not commonly seen in a hobby. Um, it's decreasing in population in the wild basically due to habitat destruction and, you know, uh, messing around with nature, as I like to call it, which you shouldn't really do. Um, but these are tank bred, of course, 
Um, they're not taken from the wild because they are uh, they are endangered, legally endangered. Um, if you go look at the the species of endangered fish, you'll find uh, you'll find them there. Um, so, anyways, the hobby's doing its part to bring them back in uh, in the tank or in the hobby itself, at least. Um, the wild is going to be a big process, of course. It could take some time, um, especially when things are as as endangered as these are. These are getting close to the critically endangered mark, if that makes sense. Um, other than that, yeah, like I said, they look pretty much like convict cichlids. These guys are only about two to three inches right now at the most. The smallest one being two, the biggest one being about three. They will get up to about three to four inches, about, well, average is three to four, but you know, I've seen them up to five inches before in my local pet shop. He's got, uh, he's got one in there that's just his show fish or whatnot. Um, but like I said, they are Central American. They originate from Costa Rica. Just going to read a couple things here because I can't memorize all this stuff. But uh, they originate from Costa Rica. They will spawn in the, in the tank, as, as I said. Um, the feeding's pretty easy, high quality, dry, frozen, live uh, food such as, you know, brine shrimp or mysis or bloodworms, blackworms, whatever. And of course, a good flake, good pellet. These guys will eat anything. Like I said, they're pretty much convict cichlids in a different body. Um, so they're they're very manageable. Um, definitely a, uh, a, a semi-aggressive fish. They have gone after each other quite a few times. So it's definitely recommended to have a good size setup, like maybe 30 or 40 gallons for a pair. I got a trio, if you want to call it that. Not sure if they're male-female or whatnot yet. Um, but I do have three in there. You can see that one's actually messing with the wood right now. So they will scrape the wood of algae, which is a cool uh, cool feature of those guys. Um, uh, what else could I say here? Uh, they like hard water. They're from Central America, of course, like I said. So they, they don't mind hard water. Um, a good 71 to 79 degrees is, is perfect. pH of 7 to 8. They're, like I said, they're really hardy fish. Just as long as you have stable parameters. And this pretty much goes with any type of aquatic animal. Just as long as you can keep the parameters stable. A fish will adapt to almost anything. You know, fish are, are generally very hardy. Everybody has their, their nitpicks with certain fish. You know, some guys aren't good with rams. Uh, some guys aren't good with African cichlids. You know, it all depends on what type of water you're using. But in my opinion, and from what I've seen factually, stable water parameters are the way to go. Just as long as you can keep it stable, the fish will be happy. You can stop messing with the water so much and, and, and they won't be bothered. I've been feeding these guys live brine, live black worms, um, frozen blood worms, frozen brine, um, cichlid, uh, what is it, omega, omega cichlid flakes. Uh, I fed them a bunch of different types of um, extreme foods. These guys, these guys eat probably 20 different things a day and I kind of just all mix it into one. So variety is key with them. Uh, again, that's kind of key with any fish. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the spawning habits yet because I haven't kept many Central American species. This is really going to be my first. Uh, as you guys know, I have that South American tank that's right directly behind me of the of the Geophagus. And uh, those guys are doing well. We'll check up on them later. But uh, the breeding habits, I don't know exactly much of them. Um, but I hear they're pretty and relatively easy to breed. So I'm going to just let them do their thing for a while. Of course, once they mature, they'll start courting and I'll be able to figure out what's male and what's female. Um, that one right there actually has got some really good color for its size, so I'm going to assume that's a male. This one, not so much color, so it could be a female. And then this one's got, you know, an intermediate level of color, so it could be a could be a male or female. Hard to say so far. Um, other than that, that's really it with those guys. I mean, they've been doing well here in here for me, and they're, like I said, in a 40-gallon breeder. Could probably add one or two more and get away with it, uh, but I'd really like to add uh, another species of Central American. And I'm really trying to narrow things down to like one region, like I said, Costa Rica or, you know, Honduras or whatever. Just something in that area of Central America where we can really kind of mush everything together and create a really niche style tank where everything's put into one in one localized region. Um, if Of course that makes sense. Like I said, I'm a bad talker. You guys have heard that a million times. So take what you can get from this. Um, of course, besides the Pleco, we won't count him as Central American. He's just part of the cleanup crew. Um, other than that, um, these guys r did run me about $16.99 per fish from Aquatic Arts, which actually isn't a bad deal. I got them during a Black Friday sale with 30% off, and they sell uh, single fish, groups of 
three and groups of six. Um, I just got the, the group of three just to start off with because I didn't, like I said, I've never kept these guys before. So this is all new to me as well. I'm going to move in here, give you guys a couple close-up shots of them just so you can get a little bit of a better view. Let me take my uh, autofocus off there. There we go. Sorry about the blurry footage. This is on a GoPro, so it's not uh, not made for high quality, but I try my best with it. So that one I think is is a female from what I see so far. Not super uh, colored yet. This one I think is a male. He is quite small, so it's hard to say exactly, but he is pretty well colored up, honestly. He's got nice blue eyes. He's got a really nice uh, mark on his dorsal fin there, and of course the yellow, the yellow pattern on the side. This one pretty much is down the same path as that last one. Good markings on him, good eyes. Um, the dorsal fin doesn't have that pronounced spot yet like this like this guy up here does. Um, so I don't know if that means anything exactly, but uh, here, here's a really good shot. You can kind of see the resemblance of a um, convict cichlid with those kind of striped bars like the jail cells. Um, hence the name convict. And uh, these guys almost look like they could be crossed with them. That's how similar they look. Except, of course, convicts don't have that yellow coloring to them. But anyways, I kind of just wanted to get in here and show you guys those. And then you can see the, the rubber lip up there as well. Check out the skate real fast. Just kind of go across it. Pretty basic. Of course, you know, I'm not into anything super fancy. No CO2 or anything in here. Sorry about that lighting there. See if I can kind of just show you the top here. Not that that matters. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with these guys. Kind of went over everything with them. I kind of went over everything with you guys about them. Hopefully we'll have some luck breeding here sometime soon because they are reaching that maturity size. At least that larger one is. Um, so we'll see what comes out of it. And I hope to uh, help bring back this population in some sort of way if I could. That'd be awesome. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. That's uh, that's about it. More videos to come. I'm trying my hardest to stay motivated with them. I'm not getting like any views lately, so not too sure what that's about. But uh, trying to keep that motivation there. So thank you guys uh, that have been watching every single one of my videos to my loyal fans, my loyal followers. I really appreciate you guys. We're getting close to 500 subscribers, so that's going to be another cool milestone. Um, but anyways, that's enough talking. This video is probably already super long, and I know you guys just want to see stuff that's straight to the point. But uh, of course, as always, let me know what you want to see. Uh, I'd love to make some more how-to videos and stuff like that. Uh, so leave a comment in the comment section down below. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, of course. That helps uh, promote the channel greatly. And uh, we'll see you guys soon.